Hey guys, Perry and Riley here. We have a new story for you, and I'm pretty sure this thing confirms that we have a little shine in us. We're getting an adaptation of the Shining sequel, Dr. Sleep. So, holy shit, that was kind of my reaction when you ran over this morning to tell me that this news broke, apparently a Deadline exclusive, that Mike Flanagan is directing the book-to-film adaptation of Dr. Sleep, which is Stephen King's sequel to The Shining. This is weird. Just tell me this is weird. This is very weird. So, uh, you guys will notice on this Sunday's mailbag, uh, shocker, we pre-taped it. And we did a little bit of a, of a tangent of Dr. Sleep. Perry is reading Dr. Sleep now. I am almost done with Dr. Sleep. We love it. We're, we're in. Uh, we found we find it, it. It's a fantastic book. And lo and behold, Deadline reports, Oculus, Gerald's oh, Game boy. director, Mike Flanagan, is going to now rewrite the movie for Akiva Goldsman. Uh, he's rewriting the script. And he's going to direct this adaptation. It is a Shining sequel. Now, before you go Shining, oh my God, that classic Stanley Kubrick film is getting a sequel. Kind of. Perry, you know what I'm talking about when I say this. Yeah, so this isn't necessarily bringing you back to the overlook right off no, the bat. It's, no. it's nothing like that. It's not a direct continuation of what happened in that original story. This takes place decades later and basically shows what happens to Danny Torrance as he grows up, who he becomes, who he encounters, and the shining ability is front and center. And this book is basically, based on what I've read so far at least, him coming to terms with, as they put it in this article, certain demons that right. his father had that now he has. And it's about certain people he meets along the way that gives you some added insight into what The Shining is really about and how far that ability extends in the real world. Uh, yeah, and so for, for all of you, if you want to just look at it this way, Little Red Rum is grown up oh, and boy. it is uh, an amazing character that I, I believe you're going to find an A-list actor to take on Danny Torrance because in his 40s now, it is he is a complex character. And the people that he meets, there are some wonderful villains in this book. Uh, I highly recommend reading this book, but this gets me excited. This movie gets me excited. I believe Mike Flanagan, everything I've mm -hmm. heard from about his adaptation of Gerald's Game, another King adaptation, it, he's the right man for the job. Yeah. And it's at Warner Brothers, so we are looking at a, a, a theatrical release so far. Things can change, of course, now that we have the juggernauts of streaming in Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon. So, but for now, Warner Brothers Pictures. Yep. He's adapting it. I can't. I I cannot wait for this movie. This might be one of the most exciting pieces of breaking news. Yeah. I I can't remember having a reaction quite like I did to any other story than when you first told me about this. And Mike Flanagan. That is a pairing that I'm very very excited about. It's clear to me that after it. Warner Brothers is taking the time and care to pair the right directors with this kind of material because if you look at Gerald's Game, I think that's a fantastic movie up until the very end. I do take a little issue with how the movie ended, but Flanagan has a stellar resume between that, you have Oculus, you have Hush. He's a really talented director, really talented storyteller, and yep. you need someone who, I think you need someone who has had a little experience adapting King's material before jumping into something as big as this. I am so curious to see who they cast as Danny, though. Oh my, I, I, I <laughs> cannot wait. That's gonna be the news that we probably both of us are gonna be looking out for, is who are they going to get to play Dan Torrance, you know, in his 40s, all grown up, still with his shining and helping people around him. Again, I can't go into the story too much because it'll ruin it. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't wait. And you bring up a good point. The fact that it did just bang up. I mean, I'm, I'm here looking at a related story, the 700 million worldwide box office for it. So it makes a lot of sense that they're going to go and grab. I know Dr. Sleep right off the bat doesn't sound like anything like an it or the shining or misery or pet cemetery. But when you say sequel to shining, you got people's attention. Mm -hmm. And this book is going to just delight Stephen King fan fans of it. The movie, they're going to have their eyes on this one in particular, because there's a great villain in this that is scary. That is not, you know, 
not maybe not Pennywise scary, but that, oh boy, I can't wait for you guys to see this. Based on how much I've read thus far, this does seem like it has just so much big screen potential where when you do call it a sequel to The Shining, it's gonna catch some eyes and yep. then the little details and details that I imagine will make their way into trailers and teaser material. Mm. I think it's really going to hook people right off the bat. If you haven't read Dr. Sleep, I highly recommend picking it up. It is really one of the most instantly engaging books that I've read in a while or listened to in a while because I've listened to a lot of material lately. So I'm very excited about this. Riley, you clearly are too. Oh, Share your thoughts on this Dr. Sleep adaptation in the comments section below. We are going to keep an eye on this one for sure and bring you every update we can possibly get our hands on. We will see you real soon. Please like and share this video and also subscribe to the Collider Video YouTube channel.